me a little bit about gabapentin in um, a post-operative setting. Um, how, how is it used to, uh, if you can get more specific about how it's used to relieve pain post-operatively versus long-term pain management? Like so gabapentin is a really useful pain tool. Uh, really, really useful pain tool. And um, unfortunately, we're still at a really early stage in veterinary medicine in understanding how it should be used, meaning acute pain versus chronic pain, and how it should be used in terms of dosing. And we have just not got blinded studies that really let us know how we should be dosing this medication. But as someone who's been using gabapentin as a tool for both acute and chronic pain, based on the human work and extrapolating that to animal use, um, I can assure you that over a greater than 15 year period, I have seen this drug be a game changer for both acute pain as well as chronic pain. So let's talk about gabapentin in the acute pain phase. What gabapentin does is it works on the dorsal horn of the spinal cord where pain signals are modulated as they go up to the brain to the pain perceiving centers of the brain. And it helps the body just modulate those signals. So in the human literature, gabapentin actually was shown to decrease the use of patient administered, uh, patient controlled analgesic. That's the pump that people talk about where they push a button and they get a dose of morphine or they get a dose of oxycodone as a part of their post-operative orthopedic recovery immediately post-op. Well, in the studies that were done, patients who were having a total knee arthroplasty, acknowledged to be the most painful orthopedic condition that people have, total knee replacement, in those patients who got gabapentin as part of their post-operative pain relief, they used less of the opiate. So in my post-operative patients, I don't reach for gabapentin for every post-operative patient, but if they're having a big procedure, an orthopedic procedure like a TPLO or a spinal decompression because they've had an intervertebral disc rupture or they're having an amputation where I'm cutting a nerve, I want to target that nerve pain. So I'll use gabapentin. If they don't have other orthopedic issues that might imply that they would benefit from gabapentin chronically, what I will do is use it at a fairly aggressive dose in the first two to four weeks post-operatively and then wean them off. We do not have to wean them off the same way we wean patients off of steroids, for instance. It can be a little quicker than that if the only time we're using that gabapentin is for that immediate post-operative time. My colleagues will often ask me, well, how high a dose should I use? And my answer is, we want to use a big enough dose to control the pain and just a little bit less than what makes the patient sedate. The patients are going to vary. So I have some dogs that are what I refer to as cheap drunks, and they cannot hold their liquor. So they actually need a much lower dose of gabapentin to keep them comfortable and not make them sedated than other dogs that I deal with who need a bigger dose in order to be comfortable and still not sedated. So the dosing range might be as low as 10 milligrams per kilogram. The dose might be as high as 50 milligrams per kilogram per dose. It really depends on the patient. That's for acute pain. Let's look at chronic pain management with gabapentin. Again, understanding that chronic pain means that there have been changes in the nervous system that allow pain to become a self-perpetuating state. That place in the nervous system that is responsible for that is the dorsal horn of the spinal cord. Gabapentin has an exquisitely specific place in the dorsal horn that it works. And what it does is it takes the threshold for firing of the nerve from minimal stimulation back up to where it belongs. I talk about this as though we are resetting the thermostat on a hot water heater. So I want that thermostat to be back up where it belongs. I don't want it to be way down here. So I don't want a light touch like this to cause pain 
if I have a nervous system and that's not working properly, a very light touch will actually cause pain and suffering in that animal. But if I can use gabapentin to take the threshold for discomfort from a light touch to a more normal, firm pressure, that is a way for me to take that pain state and restore what should be perceived as pressure and not be perceived as a painful touch.